Hi, welcome to everyone's favourite segment, Mailbag Monday, or it could be adequately described as Monster Mailbag Monday, because yes, I've got 11 items, check them out, plus a couple of postcards, crazy, so I'm just going to go through them one by one, and yes, it is Monday, check it out, so there we go, I'm starting at 1.40pm, let's see how long it takes to shoot this Mailbag Monday, for those curious. And we'll start with this one because it says urgent open ASAP. Well, okay, very first Mailbag Monday. I know this one. It is from Freddie uh, Templeton. He has queued me up. He's from Southampton in the old dart. And sir, that crazy Aussie bloke, thank you very much. Um, and let's crack this open. This is Oscar and uh, electronic components because I know that this one ends in like three or four days time it's a kickstarter project so sorry to ruin the uh <laughs> excitement of opening this thing but he sent me his opens his uh kickstarter project which is oscar hello oscar including oh look at that a lovely laser um uh, printed acrylic thing logo thing for oscar there we go there's the pcbs it looks like are they two identical ones no they're not they're Different. They're different. Let's take a look at them. Aha, that explains it. Version 1 and version 2 of the board. And what is it? Well, it's an open screen adapter which uh, drives a generic um, LCD screen from a Thunderbolt um, or DisplayPort connection. And unfortunately, I don't have a Thunderbolt or DisplayPort connection nor an LCD to hook it up. And uh, Freddie knows that, so he's just sent me the blank uh, PCBs just to show off the project. So there you go, that is the version 1 board, and yes, it is full open source hardware. Where's, oh yes, look, I love the uh, name, by the way. It, it incorporates the um, the O and the, yeah, the open source hardware symbol in the name. It's just brilliant. Anyway, uh, Retina iPad Display to DisplayPort. There you go, Freddie Templeton. That is... Uh, Version 1 and quite a few changes to version 2 here by the looks of it. They've got like a uh, general purpose I.O. interface here, which they didn't seem to have before, did they? Anyway, um, yeah, that is the latest board. And considering that I don't have anything to uh, use them with and I won't be, I have no need to build one up, I will um, ship it to the first person who wants it. So if you want the blank boards, if you have a use for these, um, drop it in the comments. First person there gets them. And there's their Kickstarter project. Oscar, they're almost at their goal. They want uh, 15,000 pounds. Yes, they're from the old dart, of course. And they've earned almost up to 12,000 pounds. Four days left. So they're almost there. And there you go. There's Freddy. Look, happy smiling dude. Look at that. And this has been developed by four of them at the University of Southampton. Uh, and Freddie, I guess, is the uh, is the head guy behind it. And there you go. It uses an AT Mega uh, 32 U4. There you go. USB interface, of course, plus uh, all miscellaneous stuff. It doesn't actually do any... I don't believe it does any uh, reprocessing of the stuff. It's pretty much just the... Um, here, they've drawn it like a chip, but this is actually the uh, flat screen... Uh, well, the um, screen flat flex connector here for the um, retina display. So if you want to use one of the... I don't even know where you get these retina displays from. I don't know. Can you buy them on eBay? I haven't actually looked. And uh, basically, they've got a backlight driver, DC to DC uh, converter here, driving all that, and... Uh, some uh, so a couple of DC to DC converters, a couple of regulators, all that sort of thing. So it's more like just a you know a, a display interface board with the processing. So I'm not exactly sure what the uh, Atmel process is actually doing. I'd have to check out the entire project. I won't do that. You guys can check it out if you're interested. So thank you very much, Freddie, for sending in this in, and I will forward the boards on to somebody who can actually use them. I hope you meet your uh, target and if you are after driving one of these uh, retina high resolution retina iPad displays from your display port, uh, process, uh, display port or your um, Thunderbolt connection then by all means check it out. And next up completely at random we have one from the United States of America from uh, Poplar Bluff MD which I believe is uh, Missouri and I can't quite read that uh, name pet something Last name, but uh, thank you very much. Gift under white paper. It uh, weighs a bit. It rattles. So, rattling's always good. 
What do we get? Uh, and here's a little tip for young male bag players. If you're going to put a box inside, make sure you've taken your personal address off it. Otherwise, uh, it gets shown on the blog. There you go. Oh, if you want your personal address shown, that's just fine. Oh, look at that. One United States dollar stuck down. Stuck down with tape. It may get damaged. Oh, thank you very much. Look at that. One US dollar. One funny money. Look at that green, cottony paper stuff. Crap. Include items, four indicator lamps, uh, blue lenses, one lenses, indicator lamps, two caps, two diodes. Hi, enjoy the blog, including videos and your uh, educating videos. Thank you very much, Lawrence. Awesome. So look, just miscellaneous stuff. We have ourselves a stud mount diode. Look at that. It's a 1N4527. Don't know the specs offhand, but, that, but that's going to be like, you know, 50 amps or something really beefy like that. It unscrews. There we go. Beautiful. And yes, I just checked. 40 amps, 600 volts. Bit of a beast, that one. And yet yeah, mounted, yeah, the other connection, the top one there and the other connection is the case, which is, of course, the metal. So you'd bolt this onto whatever. You could have a big cable coming off it, whatever you wanted to. Usually it's mounted on a big block like this to act as a heatsink. And it's also got a surge current of 500 amps. Awesome. So why does it need to be mounted on a big block like this? Well, uh, one old crusty data sheet I had a typical forward voltage of 1.4 volts. Well, 1.4 volts and uh, what was it? Uh, 40, 40 amps cable? I think it said 35 amps. Ah, well, let's uh, go with that. We're looking at 56 watts, folks. 56 watts you've got to dissipate. You're pissing away that in the diode. Unbelievable. And check out these weird-ass dummy loads that fit a, a bayonet lamp fit in. Go figure. And yes, they are 2K. I have actually measured them. Huh? They are obviously, you know, dummy load that has to be put in place in order for the system to work. When you don't want a lamp, you just want a reliable dummy load to plug in place to get a system up and running. I don't know, something like that. And we've got some really old school GE indicator lamps. Look at that. That's got like blue. It's like a blue tinted front on that. There we go. Woo! Check it out. And check out that. It's a bizarre multi-tool. <laughs> some sort of serrated edge and uh, some staggered arrangement that can do different size nuts there. Hmm. Bottle opener. And we have ourselves a uh, Philips lead replacement bulb. Look at that. We could uh, try and crack that open. There's not going to be much in there. I assume there's a constant current driver board on the bottom there. Oh, oh, hello. <laughs> hello, it just popped off. We didn't have to... Uh, Crack that open. There we are. Oh, no. Nah. Wiggle, 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 wiggle. No, nah, can't get the board out. But yeah, I can see. Like, is that? Yeah, it looks. No, there's like four diodes down in there. They using got a bridge rectifier happening. A couple of power resistors down there. But that's about all she wrote. So maybe there's not actually a constant current generator inside that thing. Yeah, all we've got is four diodes. Presumably a bridge rectifier. Uh, configuration and some dropper resistors on the back. Look at that, just all bodged on there. Oh, Phillips. Blech. And a terribly unexciting big ass 5% uh, power resistor and a cap. Uh, so thank you very much, Lawrence. Wonder what I can spend my George Washington on. Hmm. Run in tally, 27 minutes to do two items. <laughs> this ain't an easy game, folks. Next up, Robert J. Keller, PC, from, once again, the United States of America. And uh, the Yanks love sending stuff, and I love getting stuff from you Yanks. Ta-da! Let's have a look. What have we got? It's in a pouch. Dave, here is a replacement rubber feet for the HP 41C. Enjoy! Awesome! Thank you very much. I just happened to use that in the previous segment. Fantastic! Enclosed is a mailbag item. Fantastic! Thank you very much. Bob Keller. Done it again. Home address. He's a ham. Bob's a ham. Awesome. Thank you very much, Bob. Enclosed is a so-called video camera that I got on a per premium from office supply store. I suspect it must... Um, Eva worth the free, sorry I can't read hand, I'm hopeless at reading handwriting, uh, free price, but nevertheless through it may be intent to look inside, love the Eva, it came up, thank you Bob, and he's um, on the forum, RJK5388 on the forum, awesome, thank you very much Bob, let's take a look at this heap of crap, video camera, 
Oh, 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 my skin crawls, my eyes burn. Oh, oh that is shocking. Oh, that just, I'm gonna go wash my hands. This is just, just, the cheapness has rubbed off on me. VGA resolution, a quarter VGA. Woohoo, it's all happening here, folks. Oh, I'm telling you, words cannot begin to describe how cheap this thing looks and feels. Oh my goodness, even oh, even just snapping that open. God, what they get the spring out of? A bloody bike or something? You know, a kickstand on a bike? That's just oh, shocking. Digital movie, th massive, 3 megapixels. Woohoo, it's all happening. 1.8 inch TFT LCD. There's some batteries in it. Dare we power this heap of shit up. Welcome! <laughs> it works. Are there any dead pixels on there? I wouldn't be surprised to see dead pixels. Uh, oh, there we go. It works. <laughs> It's even got a macro switch in there, which kind of works. It's flipping something over the shutter. There we go, into macro mode, and it does actually focus macro-wise. But, oh, wow, that's the worst resolution I've seen in oh, 15 years or something. Oh, that is just awful. Oh. And, of course, you're not going to get a glass lens on that. It's just the sensor sitting right in the middle like that. What a heap of shit. Little LED light. Don't even know how to turn that on. There's no button for it. Oh, my God. There's just a mode thing. And that's that's it. I'm surprised they're actually measuring the battery level. Oh, it's just, just incredible. Digital zoom, obviously. But, oh, and like, of course, there's no swivel on the LCD. Oh, man. Look. <laughs> Does anyone at all want to see inside this piece of shit? Leave it in the comments. If you do, I might do a teardown of the world's shittiest, cheapest camcorder. Ugh. And it came with leads. Are you kidding me? Ugh. I hate to think what's inside this stuff. It's probably not copper. It's probably wet string. Dave the Dingo? Hmm. Well, I got here. Australia, not Austria. Still gets here. Love it. Cracks the people up at the post office, that crazy Aussie bloke. They know me. And it's a CD. Oh, it's from, by the way, I Fly by Wireless. Levitation Productions. That's just a brilliant name. Fantastic. In uh, New Zealand. Hey, a New Zealand cousin. <laughs> Sorry, had to do it. Let's have a look. You have a note. Hi, Dave. I got this as an unwanted work Christmas gift raffle thingy. Yeah, Chris Kringle thing. Right, have I found interesting with archive footage and all? Maybe you've seen already or so passing on. I remember learning RPN on the HP 35 at high school, sixth form. Ah, oh, fun stuff. I fly by wireless. Thank you very much. Origins. Oh, look. Circuit. No, I haven't seen it. Look. Look. I've got some Transformer stuff. Old school, old school Valve stuff. Origins. Oh, what is it? Look at this. In the beginning, they had a friendship about $500 and a vision for what it goes. Ah, oh, Bill and Dave. Awesome. Create an extraordinary company and tell them to people. Fantastic. Origins. No, I haven't heard about it and I haven't seen it. It only goes for 26 minutes, unfortunately. Um, but the, I wonder, I see, yeah, it's done by Hewlett Packard. Okay. Fantastic. There you go. Origins. I wonder if there's any copyright on it. Maybe if someone's uploaded it to YouTube, I wonder if I can get permission to upload it. Maybe. I might ask HP. Um, uh, grateful to the colleagues and friends. A uh, guy? Yep, yeah, there we go. Hey, every, everyone's in it. Oh, jeez. Are they, are they all in it? Everyone's in it. Every man and his dog, presumably. Wow. Okay, this is really interesting. I wonder... If uh, it's available for download, I'll have to check. If not, I'll ask if I can get permission to upload it. I had a quick look, and uh, it turns out that it's a promotional thing. You can order a copy from Hewlett Packard, but I don't think they're selling it. So it's free, and uh, somebody has already uploaded it onto YouTube, or at least in part. So maybe I'll, I'll, I'll ask them, you know, if I can uh, officially upload this onto uh, the EEV blog website for, well, for all time. Awesome. Uh, I just realized it's actually Hewlett Packard, not Agilent. Oh, bloody Keysiders they're going to become. So I don't know anyone at 
Hewlett Packard anymore, like the old, the computer Hewlett Packard. If anyone does, give me a decent contact there so I can get permission to upload this thing. Now this one's been hanging around for a while, and unfortunately, uh, this is one that Sagan often comes to me to the post office to pick up uh, to check on the mailbag. Um, and well, he's had a go at opening it so all I know is that it's from Sweden and uh, it's got electronics and plastic inside so sorry about that um, yeah I think this is the oldest one I've got in the mailbag here it's been here for quite some time anyway so hi to all my Swedish viewers we've got a note oh and yeah, we've got 3d printed stuff what is that oh it's a it, it's a is it a mouse it's a mouse. It's a 3D printed mouse cover. Yeah. There's the two switches that press down onto the micro switches. And uh, why have they, how have they got that flat surface completely flat on there and yet all the rest of it is... That's weird. It's almost like a wig or something like that. It's bizarre. Anyway, let's uh, have a look at the rest of it. Yep. Yeah, look. It's a, it's a 3D printed... There we go! They've integrated it! Custom made, 3D printed, mouse! Oh, that's, that's great! And that's really ergonomic! I like that! Oh, it's not very, it's not very smooth sailing on the bottom, that's for sure, but that is neat! <laughs> Hi Dave, I've been working on a project which I thought would be cool to have in your mailbag. Maybe you can even do a small teardown. Core idea is to use a PCB I made with a treadmill or other exercise bike and a PC or console so that you can both exercise and play a game at the same time. Basically, you walk on the treadmill and walk in the game. Huh? Recent demo, what do you have in the package? It's supposed to be a working 3D printable mouse. Okay, the firmware on it should work if you hook it up to a mini USB cable. The mouse is just proof of concept. I have to excuse the quality. Oh, good. Goodness, as the main thing is found inside the mouse. To get it out, find it easy to press the one enclosure. Take a look at the PCB, they will tell me what you think about the whole project. I feel like it's rather niche and you might not even have a treadmill. I don't understand what the deal with a mouse and the treadmill is. Anyway, um, ah, oh, okay, there's a um, that wireless module, RF wireless module on there um, that he's not using yet. There you go, the sensor is a high end laser sensor, ADNS. Uh, 9500 for those playing along at home. Micro, it's got a, a ATX Mega 32 in there, exactly as we saw on a previous segment. And uh, the PCB are made by PCB Manufacturing in China. Yeah, of course. Anyway, um, it's, uh, then I do a Kickstarter if he he's currently in marketing mode to see what he thinks. Well, I don't think there's much market for a 3D printed do-it-yourself mouse, quite frankly. Um, but you know, eh, let's have a look inside. There we go, we're getting closer to being in. There's our two little micro switches down to a head, main header on the board down in there. Neat, I like it, the little posts, and that just all slips together like that. So there you go, there's Daniel's Tread Gaming board, which of course really has nothing to do with the mouse. He's just sort of, you know, did this mouse for mucking around. It's really about the... Uh, uh, the treadmill application and using Wii nunchucks and uh, stuff like that. So that's what he's got the two um, slots for. I, I assume they're the uh, knee, uh, the Wii nunchucks. Um, yep, and that's you know for those into that sort of thing. That looks rather neat. So check out his website. I'll provide links down below if you uh, haven't seen it. So actually, that looks like a really interesting project. I just checked out the website, and I highly recommend. Uh, you do if you're into this sort of uh, gaming stuff basically yeah gaming on a treadmill with a big projection screen in front of you and you can use your knee Wii nunchuck and do all sorts of weird and wonderful things and uh, interact while you're running on the treadmill getting fit <laughs> there's got to be a niche for that surely but yeah excellent thank you very much Daniel and there's our mouse module down in there it's on its own uh, little ball just uh, soldered through hole pins by the looks of it on the bottom yep there we go there's our little laser module down in there shoots it out and uh you know basically how all optical mice pretty much work these days and a matching optics uh package on there to focus it next up one from phil crawley from route 6 workshop in london in the old dart again good on you phil thank you very much electronic components well let's uh, no it's not in the center there uh it's one of these end open things is it yeah, 
I get fooled every time. Oh look, let's open the end on here, shall we? Here we go. There we go. Ask first. Here we go. Oh, another package inside. Letters. Business card from Route 6 Workshop. Let's have a look. Not a letter. It looks like a schematic. And we have, oh, it's a DVI to DVI. DVI to DVI, but there's got to be circuitry in there. Um, yeah, it's a DVI to DVI. It's a gender changer. That's it. Okay, next. Maybe I need the gender changer for what's in here, perhaps. No? A cable. And we've got a weird ass Nutrix connector. Not sure what that sucker is. That's weird. Huh. I think I'm going to hand some cables. I think I'm going to have to read the note. And of course it all makes sense once you actually read the note from Phil. I'm a broadcasting engineer and yeah, he's all worked on all sorts of old school stuff. Interestingly, he's got a, uh, a broadcast engineering podcast. There you go, Engineers Bench. I didn't know about it. Check it out. Engineersbench.com. Awesome. Um, Enclosed are a couple of jiffy bags, fiber optic parts, lots of studio cabling is now done over fiber using fusion splices. Um, yep, I've used those before. Uh, you'll find the multi core loose tube cable with 24 fiber cores containing mineral oil. Fiber pin tails with the LC connector are pre-terminated by splicing them. You can get much better lost fibers. Yeah, typically, you know, sub 0.5 dB. I think when I was working on fiber optic stuff, we were aiming for like 0.2 dB or something like that. I can't remember. I don't know, it was a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. Um, uh, he's throwing in a uh, Nutrix optical con. Ah, bulkhead, there it is. Okay, check out the dust cover that engages as you remove the fiber from the connector. Interesting. And the DVI hot plug, here we go. It's a spoofer. It's like a, a dongle type thing. The editing software we um, sell, a avid media composer does crazy stuff as it senses a change of monitor even if you disconnect and reconnect one of your dvi displays and insists on restarting oh it's a complete fail there you go um so he sells stuff and he got this manufactured uh lifts pin, pin 16 and keeps it tied to vcc via a resistor one hung low factory in china makes them in quantities of 300 and they only charge five quid a go awesome thank you very much phil and this, folks, is optical connector porn. Look at this. Here's our little fiber optic uh, plug and fiber optic cable. There we go. I've taken the cap off. Usually they, they well, came with a cap on the end just to protect it. And watch this as I push it in. I'll see if I can... Ah, uh, no, we may not. Oh, let me turn the exposure up. I've got fixed exposure and fixed focus here. Let's see if we can see it engage push that shutter, look at that, look at that, you can see that dust shutter flip, see it, see that metal, there, I can't put, there, there it is, <laughs> it, it flips up like that, and then the pins come up and engage and locks that in place, ah, beautiful, optical connector porn, love it, there it is again closer, as I plug it in, see that pop up, and to reveal, ta-da, there's the fiber at the back there. Look at that. Ah, oh, thing of beauty and a joy forever. And there's the inner part of the fiber. And we've got, there you go. There's our multi-core fibers, all nicely color-coded. Fantastic. And for those who know your fiber optic, there we go. It's a Draca Comtech. Woohoo! And this one comes from Neek. Blankers, if I'm pronouncing that incorrectly, sorry, uh, from the Netherlands. That crazy Aussie bloke, that'll get here every time. So thank you very much, Nick. Let's have a look in here. I'll, I'll call you Nick. Good on you, Nick. No whackers, mate. Let's have a look. we just got some, I don't know what that, that padded material, something like that. Yeah, uh, a Bearduino Nano. There we go, from Seed Studios. Ah, oh, awesome! Neek is 15 years old from the Netherlands. Hello, all viewers. In one and a half years, I'll be going to the University of Technology here in uh, Eidhoven to attend EE. Awesome! I'm writing this to tell you that I appreciate your videos very much. 
Awesome, fantastic. I've been interested in electronics since I was less than eight years old. Oh, terrific, me too. I would tape paper clips to my door, use the tape to attach teeth, strip wire to them, have a lead light up when the door was opened. Awesome. Shortly after receiving my first soldering at the age of nine, I got admitted to DJO Amersford, a young hacker space with minimum age requirement of 12. Fantastic. I know people from uh, Amersford because uh, uh, Agilent, uh, Agilent, Altium have a uh, facility in um, Amersford. So there you go. I'm currently working on lots of projects involving Arduino boards. A recent project of mine designing and building Nixie Tube Clock. Excellent. I started a thread on the forums where you can keep track of my projects. He sent me a bare Arduino Nano, which I designed. He designed it two years ago. Fantastic. So I set out to try and make an Arduino that's even smaller than the tiny Femto Arduino. Needless to say, I succeeded. The board measures 21 by 14. For the first couple of prototypes, I hand applied the solder paste, which is a real pain. Jeez, I wasn't doing solder paste at your age. Oh man, unbelievable. Uh, later on I visited a local fab lab and got some stencils laser cut to my see the kids these days. I mean, you know, it was only what 13 when he designed this bare Duino board and already he's getting laser cut uh, stencils for SMD. Jeez, oh, when I was a boy it was through hole. SMD was ah, uh, wasn't even a glint in the eye. Uh, to my surprise, C Studio accepted my request to get them manufacturing and selling the board for me. Awesome, thank you very much, Neek. Neek Productions on the forum. Awesome. And there's his Nixie Tube Clock Project. Excellent. Hooked up to a breadboard, by the looks of it. And uh, a, a drawbridge schematic. I drew in elementary school. <laughs> Neek CAD. <laughs> Excellent. And Bearduino version 1. There's his version 1 of the board. On, uh, yeah, all through hole stuff. Fantastic. And he's got it down to this. And, well, there's the size of my finger. So, yep, that's pretty awesome, Neek. Fantastic. Unfortunately, the only disadvantage of this, of course, is the pin pitch. It's not standard 0.1 anymore. You just, you know, when you get down this small, you can't use standard uh, pin pitch. But that is, that is fantastic work to design that a couple of years back when you're only 13 years old and get it manufactured and selling it through Seed Studios. Awesome. Two thumbs up, Neek. And we have what looks like just a letter from Matthias, oh, I can't pronounce your last name, from Finland. Oh, this could take some slice it open. Hang on. Idiot test. Surely I'm being put to a test here. I'm sure of it. Oh, man. I think I've failed. I think I've failed miserably. And another youngster, only 17 years old, Matthias from Finland. He uh, loves the channel. Thank you very much. I apologise for your bad English. English is better than mine. In fact, your handwriting is better than mine, I think. It's, uh, he's on a radio... My internet radio station is called Mazza Radio. Um, and greetings from Finland. It's 30 degrees below zero. That's just ridiculous. But he's still smiling. Fantastic. And what is Mazza Radio for those who... Can uh, read finish there? Go for it. Now, this one was a little bit uh, confusing. I thought, oh, okay, great, I got an Aussie one. And, well, sure enough, it is from Australia. There you go, uh, Flinders Lane Post Office. It's a, an Australia Post box and uh, was posted here. But on the back, the return address is Gerard Vogel in Santa Clara, California, in the United States of America. And uh, America, America. <laughs> people hate it. The Yanks hate it when I say that. So I continue to do it just to rile people up. So thank you very much. Let's have a look what's inside. And ta -da! Whoa, geez. Oh, Cypress kit. Hello. That's pretty serious. Cypress uh, 3 development kit. Easy USB FX 3. Whoa, that looks serious feels serious. I mean, well, it's got a 5-volt uh, DC adapter on there, so it's not, obviously, not just powered from uh, the USB port, so it's got to be pretty grunty. Let's have a look at that. So we've got our plug pack, silly American bloody plug on it. That's no good, but that's okay. 5-volt adapter, and this looks like serious business. Here we go. Oh, check it out. Look at the high-speed board interconnects there. There we go. Got nothing else with it, so no add-on modules. So, there you go. The FX3 from Cypress. Well, it's, oh, there we go. USB 3. Look at Oh, well, of course. That's what it's, that's what it's actually for. USB 3. We've got ourselves battery-backed 
uh, real-time clock on the back, presumably. But yeah, it's a USB development, a USB 3.0 development kit. Awesome. Hi, Dave. It's something that I hope you'll be able to put to better use than I could. The package will arrive before my postcard. Thank you very much, Gerard. I don't know why you can't use it. There you go. A, well, a USB 3, I guess, if you're not into developing projects with USB 3, then it's of no use. Obviously, that is the key uh, requirement of this uh, uh, controller, which we'll uh, take a look at. But uh, yeah, it's all about that USB 3 interface. Probably not many on the market that do a full speed, I assume it's full speed USB 3 interface. And this is what's on the board. There we go. They've got the FX3 uh, general purpose interface. Uh, it's not really a processor. It's just an interface chip for USB generic, uh, you know, interface device that you can hook up to your microcontroller or your FPGA or whatever. It's got RS-232. It's got to have that. Uh, I2S headers. So there you go. It supports I2S uh, audio. There's an E-squared prom socket. General purpose interface connector there. Doesn't tell you what that one is. Presumably that's part of that. A uh, JTAG, of course, and uh, 5 volt power jack. So it's all about that USB 3 interface. So Obviously, there are, and of course, you could feed in, you know, really high-speed stuff. These are high-speed board inner, inner connects. They'd be all running controlled impedance pairs, probably over to the USB 3 chip over here. Let's check it out. And here you go, peripheral controller. That was the word I was after, <laughs> the phrase I was after. Yeah, it's a USB 3 designed to hook up to, in this case, uh, you know, pretty much anything. They're telling you, you know, HD video, you can hook it up to your FPGA or anything to uh, stream um, ASIC or whatever, image sensors, all that sort of stuff. So something like this would be absolutely ideal for the uh, Tagano microscope we just saw, for example. In fact, it wouldn't surprise me if the Tagano microscope used one of these FX3 processors in there to stream that HD image data, full HD at 60 frames per second, across the USB 3 interface like that. So there's probably only a few devices on the market that'll do that full speed. So there you go. Check out the Cypress Easy USB FX3. Bit of a beast. And there you go, it does actually have an ARM9 in it to control it. This is the block diagram, but uh, basically the high-speed uh, general purpose interface bus over here. It's got the UART, SPI, I squared C, and uh, what else have we got? We've got easy check, yep, and USB 2 on the go, but it's got USB 3 as well with 512k SRAM embedded on the sucker. So quite a powerful little beast if you want to hook up. USB 3 to your product, if you've got that amount of data to transfer, well, you know, I mean, you're not going to roll your own solution, you're going to use one of these off-the-shelf per peripheral chips, no doubt about it. And this one's from Vision Ect, do, D-O-O, in Slovenia. Don't get many from Slovenia, so thank you very much. If, oh, okay, yes, I know what this is. Check it out. It's a tablet. Yes, I think I was keyed up on this one, if I remember rightly. Let's have a look. I think it might be quite, quite impressive. Arr, arr, die, die. Bloody bubble wrap, tape and all sorts of, arr. it's not Amazon frustration free packaging. Ta-da, it is a tablet. Look at this, IP67 dust and water resistant, Wi-Fi, e-ink display, months of autonomy. It is a Vision Elect tablet. So, pull upwards. Here we go. It could be Amazon-like frustration-free packaging once you get it out of the... Oh, 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 you got to rip it, look. Oh, look at that, V-shaped. V for victory. Oh, tap into the world of Vision Elect. Now, what do you do when you... There we go. Oh, oh, I don't know, that's a bit silly, but I understand the V. Oh, look at that. Touch to start. Okay, hang on. Might take a few seconds. Oh, we got very Amazon-like. Everyone's copying the Amazon Kindle type uh, packaging. Here we go. Touch to... Whoop! Big fail there. You can see my, see my bare feet. All right, let's go. Here we go. Touch to start. Might take a few seconds. Disconnected, power saving. One, two, three, four, five. 
It's connected power saving. Oh, oh, has it? No, it's taking more than a few seconds. I think we have a fail. Huh, huh. No, hello, touch anywhere else. It looks like that's a, almost looks like it's a sticker on there, but it's not. That's just the uh, high resolution ink display, but apparently this thing is uh, waterproof and uh, IP67. Well, I do have USB power here on the bench, so let's... Oh, something beeped. Mm. What, what? Oh, hello! We're in. There we go. It was just out of juice, as you'd expect. There you go. Well, you shouldn't. I mean, it's supposed to... It proclaimed, proudly pro proclaimed a long battery life. So it looks like this one was drier than a dead dingo's donger. Thank you for charging the V-Tablet. How kind. You're welcome. I couldn't wait to charge you. But, uh, yeah, I believe, um, from memory, uh, yes, they did contact me about this, and this is like a development platform for a e for exactly a tablet like this, for an e-ink uh, tablet that is, you know, IP67 rated. So you develop your apps on here, and you can run them, and you can run your specialised uh, applications. I think it's, you know, it's got Wi-Fi and everything else uh, sort of built in of course, so that you can uh, communicate with whatever product you want. So, I believe they have a larger one as well, but this is the little, little itty bitty one, and uh, it does look very sexy. And here you go, visionect.com. I think I was calling Vision Elect. No, it's Vision Ect, E-C-T. And uh, yeah, it's an electronic uh, e-ink, e-paper development uh, platform, development kit. Basically, in a matter of minutes, our electronic paper devices enable beginners and professionals to use their web development skills and develop new electronic paper products in minutes because, well, you just buy the platform. It's ready to go here. So your idea, yep, yeah, blah, 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 why us? No need to develop firmware. It sh shouldn't be hard. You can develop hardware products with JavaScript, HTML, and CSS in your browser just like any other web app. Awesome, robust with incredible battery life, newspaper reader for your outdoor hot tub, yeah, could do it. I don't know, will it survive? You're making a claim there, will it actually, it might be IP67 rated, but that might not, that's not going to be full immersion in a hot tub at, what, you know, what's a hot tub running at, 35 degrees or something crazy like that? Ah, oh, 35 shouldn't be too bad, but anyway, fully water waterproof and won't break easily. Well, I could break it, let me tell you. Um, it brings great sunlight, readability, plus only charge the device every long period of time. Think weeks, not hours. Prototyping production, do both. Thinking about going from your lab into production, we got you covered. You can prototype and test on your PC with our development kit, and you're ready. Just deploy our infrastructure to scale. There you go. Neat. Check them out. It's got Wi-Fi, uh, LiPo battery, of course, accelerometer, of course. You've got to be able to, you know tilt and swivel and throw the thing around and be able to interact and uh, you can get them in different sizes. There you go, there's no buttons at all on the thing. This is the six inch tablet here. Oh, they've got a shot inside. Maybe if people want to see a uh, teardown inside this thing, I could do a separate teardown. They've also got a 9.7 inch one and only mono, of course, it's not a colour uh, e-ink display. There you go. Oh, Linux base, there's a little penguin. Fantastic, all the nerds out there getting very excited. Epson, does it have an Epson, Epson uh, e-ink? Uh, well, Epson drivers or whatever. Real life on V platform. Well, it's all here. It's tons of stuff. There you go. I think it only costs a couple hundred. Uh, professional development kit, 749 euros for the six inch development kit. So yeah, it's a bit pricey, but if you're looking to develop a product, well, you know, it's pretty cheap. The hardware's ready to go. It's only a one-off cost, but yeah, a bit pricey. It's not sort of real hobbyist level. Okay, let's see if we can get it to do something now. Here we go. There we go. I gave it five minutes of juice and, uh, no, no, disconnected, power saving, it's flickering. No, no, disconnected, no, it's not enough power, clearly. It's probably trying to maybe start up the Wi-Fi module or something, and it's just going, Ugh! sorry, don't have enough juice. Nah, well, I would have expected like an, an example app on here, of course, which they have, I mean, touch to start. So, yeah, more charging. And while that one's charging, we'll find out more about Eric. Is that Eric? 
I don't know. Looks like um, sort of a clip art, Eric. But these are um, RF modules. And here we go, low power RF modules. The Eric, get it? Um, easy radio sub one gig uh, uh, RF transceiver. And, you know, so just plug them in and they just go. You know, you don't have to dick around with anything. Oh, my tablet's beeping over there. It's doing something. No. No, it's just telling me to continue to charge. Secure data transmission, uh, frequencies for worldwide markets. You've got to, you know, if you're serious about it, you've got to get the right uh, module for your market. And program by application memory and program by low power options. There we go. AES 128-bit uh, data encryption. Awesome. And uh, do they support all of Europe? A yep. Asia Pacific? Yep. Ooh. Offering current consumption as low as 32 microamps. Low power operation, is that transmitting? Small bursts, of course, small bursts of data, nothing uh, incredibly serious in uh, 32 microamps, really. So let's, oh, oh, look at that. Isn't that sexy? We've got ourselves a shoulder bag. Oh, I can carry this around the local shopping center and I can look pretty schmick in my, uh, I'll get my Ugg boots on and I'll <laughs> walk around my local shopping center with my tote bag. Um, Europe's leading supplier of short range radios. Wireless mic. There, that's wireless mic. Okay, that's wireless mic. Clip art, wireless mic. And uh, introducing the Eric. There's all their marketing wank. There you go. Fantastic. All proven. Blah, blah, blah. All that sort of jazz, and that's what you want. I mean, look, they've got some single in-line package versions of them. And, yeah, concept, prototype, development, they do all sorts of stuff. Arduino boards to communicate wirelessly using proprietary radio links. Fantastic. So if you've got an Arduino, you want a no-fuss RF solution that just plugs in and works, then, well, something like this is worth checking out because there's nothing worse than dicking around trying to get your own protocol and get something working and things like that. No, just don't dick around. Just use an off-the-shelf module. So they're fancy packaging. Jeez. And they're going to town. Wireless mic again. We're obsessed with wireless mic. And I think I've seen some of their videos on their website. And yeah, they've got like an animated, animated wireless mic. Look at this, but it's very nicely presented. Please remove my head and plug me into the USB port. I have lots of information. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, okay, there we go, all right, this has gone into the sad department, please remove my head, he's a USB stick, there you go, and his legs move, and you can sit him on the side of the thing, and well we can, oh I just broke his arm, broke his arm, ah, oh, there we go, USB stick, ah, oh, doesn't plug into here obviously, it just plugs into your PC, he's dead, sorry Eric, Killed you, mate. No worries. It's just got, uh, likely got all the data sheets and all the software and examples and stuff like that. But these are the little modules. Neat. Check them out. And, of course, these are dead easy to use. You know, ground and VCC. It's even got a built-in regulator on the board there. And it handles. It's got the bandpass filter. You just hook it up to the antenna and serial data in and out. And that's, you know, it's got a carrier detect uh, pin. So you could hook that up to a LED to tell you that your character's carrier is uh, active that you're receiving it and it's got a busy so you can you know your processors oh, oh modules busy i can't do anything at the moment just dead easy to use serial in and out takes care of all the prototype uh, proto call for you and also um it does i don't know if this particular one yes optional data encryption there you go that's this particular module here that we're playing with and uh yeah optional um aes 128 bit encryption and our network at digital channel select all that sort of jazz, you know, fantastic, off the shelf, just works, worth every cent, these modules. But I plug the battery in, plug the antennas in here, and, uh, well, LEDs light up, but I expected them to sort of be pre-programmed to auto-link, and uh, one to be the transmitter, one to be the receiver, and, well, I don't know, I because there's no paper manual, I don't want to have to plug in dead air here. Um, eh. I don't know. And there's the module there, but check it out. They've actually got it in a spring socket. Look at that. I mean, these are individual individual springs going to the uh, half moon pads on the module in there, like standard thing. You can actually surface mount this thing. You can uh, solder it down to the, your board, surface mount pads on your board, or 
you can uh, use through hole links or you can actually put it in a socket like that that is very sexy I like that oh. I can only assume that these actually come pre-configured just for a serial in-out application. And no surprises for finding a USB to serial converter FTDI on there, it's the FT230XQ. And of course, you know, these boards are probably uh, come pre-configured instead of like the demo app with the buttons I was kind of expecting. Maybe they just come uh, pre-configured to accept serial in and out. So you just plug the serial in, they appear as serial ports and bam, you can send data between two computers. Easy. Now unfortunately to test these requires a bit more time than I've got for the mailbag today so if you want to see me play around with these things then uh, leave it in the comments and I might do a future video on it because really you know to do it justice you've got to you know, test out the range, you've got to serial in, serial out, test out the encryption and, and stuff like that, maybe uh, measure some stuff with spectrum analyzer, things like that. Yeah that's a fairly decent uh, involved video to trial these things out but thank you very much guys for sending the Eric! Awesome! And if you were wondering what Eric stood for, it's Easy Radio Integrated Controller. Eric is dead. Got anything yet? Look, it, re it actually reacted to that, I think. Not disconnected, power saving, what the? I don't know. It said it was like a third charged or something. I don't know what's going on. Oh, Aloha from Tropical Paradise. Been there, got the t-shirt. Hey Dave, I love your channel even though I am not an electrical engineer. Something about your segment is just fun. I wanted to watch, I, to watch went to Hawaii uh, for two weeks. Just had to send a card. Thank you very much, Taylor. Awesome. Little robot. And it's a penguin from Ushaya World End. How do you pronounce that? Um, there you go. It's the Patagonic Penguin. Who knew? It reaches 55 centimetres in height. It builds its nest in small caves as soil depressions or digging through grass roots. The egg laying is around late October. Each female usually lays two eggs and pigeons... Pigeons? Yes! <laughs> Baby penguins are born after 40 days of incubation. I'm currently on a... Hi Dave! Currently on a trip through South America and thought I'd finally drop your card after seeing so many episodes of your show. Chances are you're going to pick my card during a mailbag episode. And I am sending you one from the southern tip of South America. Awesome. Never been to South America. In the uh, small harbour town of Ushaya, as I try to pronounce incorrectly before, as I do with all names. I normally live in Berlin, Germany, so getting here was quite a trip. It was. Thank you very much, Adrian. Awesome. Well, this is boring. Anyway, for those keeping uh, tabs, there you go. Just over two hours to shoot that mailbag. Look. It's got two battery bars, and I just disconnected it. Touch to start, disconnected, power saving, yeah, okay. Touch. Touch what? Do I have to touch the word touch? Okay. Unbelievable. It's got to have been on charge for, I don't know, 45 minutes now, something like that. Oh, fail. Well, there's one neat thing I like about the design aspect of this thing is that Look, it's got little um, strap holders on there so that the thing can, you know, have a neck, uh, you know, hang around your neck and then it's on the correct end so it just flips up like that so you can read it and then it can just hang from your chest. Fantastic. <sighs> I give up. Going home. Catch you next time.